I want you to tell me about torque. What is torque? <laughs> It has to do with going fast. <laughs> Torque is the brute power of the motor. It's not the RPMs, it's the actual power the motor has to produce. Torque really gets you going. It pulls you from turn to turn. And the torque is more important to help you win races than the RPM, I feel. Torque is just plain power. <laughs> That's what I would say torque is. Torque is plain power. Whenever you mash it, it goes. That's torque. <laughs> Those truck enthusiasts aren't engineers, but most of them seem to appreciate what torque does. You said it. They know it's important, but they can't quite define it. Why don't you define it for them? Uh, let me demonstrate. Okay, torque is a rotary or twisting force. Now, to loosen this lug nut here, I'm applying force to this wrench handle and turning it in a circle. Now, work done in a circle is torque. Yeah, wait a minute. You better explain to them what you mean by work. Okay, now work in a scientific sense is a force needed to move an object multiplied by the distance that object is moved. Now force is stated in pounds, distance is stated in feet. Work, the product of these two, is stated in foot pounds. And torque is work done in a circle. By the way, I'm glad you said work in the scientific sense because for most truck owners, work is not going in circles. Right. Work is pulling and hauling and climbing. And, and torque is one measure of an engine's ability to do these things. Listen. Torque. Torque is good for climbing hills. That's what your low end power comes from. And torque is what gets you down the road. It's definitely, yeah. It's everything. Here's how torque is created in an engine. With combustion, the pistons go down, turning the crankshaft and producing torque. Torque, rotary power, is what an engine puts out. Small block develops so much torque, but a big block develops a whole lot more, more torque because of the long stroke and bigger bowl. As the man says, different engines produce different amounts of torque, depending on the length of the piston stroke, the size of the cylinder bore, and many other things. But no matter how much or how little of it an engine has, torque can be thought of as the raw power of an engine. It's measured directly at the output shaft, and it's one measure of an engine's power. The other, of course, is horsepower. Hey, can we talk about horsepower for a minute? <laughs> be my guest. All right. Horsepower is derived from torque. Now, torque is work, and horsepower is the amount of work an engine can do in a certain amount of time. Well, 200 years ago, James Watt gave us the formula for horsepower. See, he wanted to find some way to express the capabilities of his newly improved steam engines to a society where horses had always done the heavy work. Well, through observation, he concluded that a strong horse used in a mining operation could lift 330 pounds a distance of 100 feet in a minute. 33,000 foot-pounds per minute became a unit of horsepower. Now, today, we no longer compare our truck engines to horses, but horsepower ratings survive as common and convenient gauges of what engines can do. And that's it for horsepower. <laughs> Good work. Now, let's get on with the story of how this power gets from the engine to the rear wheels and gets you down the road. Your turn. Now, remember, torque is the power output of the engine at the crankshaft. It goes into the transmission, as modified according to the gearing selected, is then transferred by the drive shaft to the rear axle, where again it is modified according to the rear axle ratio. And finally, it goes out to the rear wheels. It's this torque to the rear wheels that provides the traction needed to move that truck down the road. Torque to the rear wheels is what you really want. You can have all the torque in a motor, but if you're not getting it on the ground, you're not gonna go anywhere. These racers only care about one thing, getting down the track faster than the next guy. Fuel efficiency is not important. They only have to go 300 feet. But most truck buyers are concerned with a combination of things. They want power enough to do their particular job, but they may be concerned with fuel efficiency too. To some extent, you can choose the power team to fit your needs. Chevrolet offers 12 different engines for its light duty trucks. There are seven transmissions, and 11 rear axle ratios. I said you can choose to some extent because for any given truck, only certain of these will be available. Let's take a look at a couple of the more popular combinations. Here we have the 2.5 liter Tech 4. It features an electronic fuel injection system, which we'll tell you more about later. But this little powerhouse develops 134 foot-pounds of torque and 92 net horsepower commonly teamed with a four-speed manual transmission and a 3.42 to 1 rear axle ratio, 
the Tech 4 has more than enough power for light load hauling and parcel delivery. Applications common to trucks equipped with this engine. There are other possibilities with a Tech 4, though. If a buyer wants a Tech 4 with a standard four-speed manual, but also wants increased power to the rear wheels to get a heavy load moving, he can choose a numerically higher rear axle ratio, like the 3.73 to 1. In another case, a buyer who does a lot of highway driving may choose the optional five-speed manual transmission with overdrive. He will have the same power, but at highway speeds, the engine will work less. You see, a transmission is a torque multiplier. More torque is needed to start a truck moving, so first gear is used to start off. In first, the engine crankshaft turns several times for every turn of the drive shaft. Now, as you gain speed, you shift to progressively higher gears. With many transmissions, high gear is like direct drive. The drive shaft turns once with every revolution of the engine's crankshaft. Now, some transmissions even have overdrive and extra gear for highway driving. Now, in overdrive, the engine actually makes fewer revolutions than the drive shaft. Working, working less, less and, and saving, saving fuel. fuel. Like the transmission, the gears in the differential multiply torque. Unlike the transmission, however, these gears cannot be shifted. Chevrolet light-duty trucks have a variety of axle ratios, ranging from 2.73 to 1 up to 5.29 to 1. Now, not all are available with every truck, but there is almost always a choice. A numerically lower axle ratio means fewer turns of the engine for each turn of the axle. Less torque, more speed. A numerically higher axle ratio multiplies torque by allowing fewer turns of the axle at the same engine speed. This high axle ratio is for trucks that need a great deal of torque on a regular basis. Uh, here's another popular engine. It's a 5 liter V8 and it's found on a variety of Chevrolet trucks. But let's get specific. A C20 pickup that carries heavy loads. For this task, the 5 liter can be teamed with a 4 speed automatic with overdrive. An automatic transmission eliminates the clutch wear that might occur when a manual transmission is used for heavy work. This transmission can be matched with the 3.73 to 1 rear axle ratio, which provides enough power to the rear axle to get the big loads moving. That's just one example of the wide selection of transmissions and rear axle ratios available with a 5 liter V8. But transmissions and axle ratios aside, it is the engine, the source of power, that is the heart of the powertrain. And engine designs are changing with the times. Miniature computers have made possible sophisticated fuel injection systems for some engines. Take the 2.5 liter Tech 4, for example. The electronic fuel injection system, or EFI, meters fuel into the engine, eliminating the need for a carburetor or choke. This provides smoother, more reliable cold starts and quicker throttle response. Along with EFI have come equally interesting improvements in the way fuel is burned. Behind every redesigned combustion chamber and every attempt to improve on spark plug placement, there's been one overriding goal, to burn fuel completely and therefore more efficiently. 